I think it is a abuse of the gavel. It is uh, identifying a, a m religious minority group to go after uh, for political advantage. Uh, I think it is a missed opportunity because the truth is terrorism is a reality of the world we live in and we need to be protected from it. We need to know more about it. And so he has missed the opportunity to get the best information at numerous occasions. The first hearing that he held, he didn't have one single law enforcement official mm. on his panel at all. Sheriff Baca was the only law enforcement official called by the minority Democrats. Uh, and so here we are again. He doesn't want me to testify, although if there's anybody in Congress who knows something about the Somali-American community, it's got to be me. This is the community I represent. Yeah, but, but you interrupt the, the, the morality play, the medieval morality play that he's got going there, don't you? Well, he had a certain uh, way he wanted things to go, and they didn't go that way. So he this is trying to stage a hearing uh, to maximize his political advantage. But that shouldn't be what a hearing is all about. A hearing should be about true fact-finding. It should be mm -hmm. about in, uh, illumination, not uh, inflammation of, uh, of, of, of emotion and things like that. And here's the other thing. I mean, he brought this hearing forward saying that there's this dire, grave, urgent threat from Somali Americans in America and not one single witness verified that that was true. They did say that uh, Shabab had recruited um, young Somali Americans back to Somalia, but this case that we were in dire threat of the Somali community that he said simply was not borne out by the testimony that he arranged. As a matter of fact, several witnesses said that building trust between law enforcement and the Somali community is the way to go. It's the best law enforcement tool, yet that's not the, paint, uh, the picture he painted. He, uh, again, wanted to whip up uh, motion and fear and uh, be very selective about the information that came forward. And, and this part where he said that a, apart from the strategic and moral reasons why these hearings are vital to our security, they're also liberating and empowering to the many Muslim Americans who are intimidated by leaders in their own communities and who are now willing and able to come forward. Who the hell is he talking about? I didn't see anybody like that at this hearing. I have absolutely no idea who he's talking about. Let me tell you, I uh, speak to communities uh, all over the country, including in my own district, and he, this process is almost universally uh, uh, feared uh, and, re and, and very much resented because he's not trying to get to public safety, he's trying to get to demonize a community. And uh, the fact is, is that demonization of the Muslim community uh, in, in America and in Europe uh, has led to some very unfortunate outcomes. I mean, here's the thing. Uh, Anders Breivik, in mm -hmm. his manifesto, specifically mentioned American uh, anti-Muslim uh, activists as inspirations for his, his uh, horrible work, which resulted in the loss of life for uh, over 70 uh, Norwegians. So this, is a, this horrible, toxic rhetoric has very, very real consequences for people. And I hope that, you know, Chairman King begins to understand that he is contributing to a toxic and ugly atmosphere that has real consequences. I wish I hoped with you, sir. I think it's just un-American what he's doing. Uh, Congressman Keith Ellison of Minnesota, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for your time. Always a pleasure, Keith. Take care now. You too. I'll go further than that. Congressman Peter King is un-American. And frankly, forgive the language, he's an asshole.